Hello, this is Philip Myers of Pemmy Consulting. If you haven't seen the original old science fiction TV show, The Outer Limits, you can track them down on YouTube. They fall into place right behind the Twilight Zone. Anyway, I'm continuing the video I made on sinusoids. The sinusoid is the building block of the Fourier series. If you plot the bottom elevation around a tank on the x-axis as you go around once from 0 to 360 degrees, or in radians 0 to 2 pi, you'll get something that usually looks like a sinusoid. I'll show some plots later. The key to the Fourier series is that with good enough sines and cosine terms of increasing frequency, we can get an accurate representation of the plot. We do this so that we can perform a regression on the data and from this determine the curvature of the tank bottom at all locations on the perimeter to see if any locations have excessive curvature, which is a stress problem for the tank. The upper picture shows a new tank with a flat bottom. After time, the tank can tilt due to settlement without distortion. In this case, you get a cosine curve described in API 653. This is called planar tilt. You can stare at this for a while to see why a cosine curve falls out of the plot for a circular tank bottom that has tilted without any distortion. But I won't hold you up with these details. Look at it later. This is real data from a tank bottom and you can see that there appears to be a cosine with a higher frequency cosine curve. The red line is a regression using cosine of x, but the blue line is a regression using both the cosine of x and cosine of 2x. It's a much better fit as you can see. This has happened because the tank bottom is folding like a taco, just very slightly. So regression using two modes or cosines was much better than just one mode. We can de increase the mode indefinitely, but that could create other problems, namely overfitting. The concept is discussed in the white paper on GitHub. Finally, here we summarize the previous slides. The red line is the planar tilt of the tank bottom. The blue line is the taco folding that is occurring. Finally, the black line is the actual bottom curvature. Here are some resources that you look at to help you better understand the concept of the Fourier series, which I'm going to demonstrate next. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the Fourier series with Maple. So we'll <clears throat> restart, which is clearing out all the existing variables. Plot the cosine function. I'm using t instead of x. It could be t or theta or x or any symbol. And you can see that I've plotted two cosine curves, one here and one here. Now, what I'll do next is add uh, 1.5 times cosine of twice the base frequency of t and then add something to the phase. So let's run this line. And you can see that this has two waves in it superimposed on top of a big cosine curve. This is somewhat like the plot that I showed previously. And here I'll add cosine of 50 and you can see that the high frequency is embedded in the cosine. The basic idea of the Fourier series is that I can create any function if I have enough sine and cosine terms. So I'll demonstrate that next. This is kind of a classic uh, demonstration of a triangular wave. This is what it looks like and I want to see if I can estimate or create a simulate this with sines and cosines. So I, I'll map f as a function of t. So it's now uh, plotted here and then I'll go down to these lines of code. It's pretty amazing you can do this in three lines but uh, I'll put the a coefficients here, b coefficients, and uh, the sum of the sines and cosines. Now this function allows me, I'll start out with say two terms, so I'll run that and you can see that I already have a pretty good fit with just sine of x, sine of 2x, cosine of x, cosine of 2x. Since this is an even function uh, there are no sine terms. 
but let's see if we can make this a little bit better. I'll go to 20 terms. And you can see it's nearly a perfect fit. All right, let's try a different function. This is another classic, it's a square wave. So between minus pi to zero, it's negative one. And then from zero to pi, it's positive one. So I need to input the function and plot it. And then I'll show you what the Fourier series of this looks like. If I limit it to, let's try five terms. So you can see that I'm starting to get a square wave, but that's not really a great fit. Let's go to uh, 50, 50 terms. So this is doing 50 integrations, so it takes uh, a minute. And this is a fast computer. So you can see that this has a frequency of 50 in it. Not a bad fit. There's something that happens at discontinuities and that's called the Gibbs phenomenon. And you can see that the estimate's not so good where there's a, uh, a jump in the function. These endpoints with an infinite number of points would converge right here to zero. But these lines would be perfectly straight. All right, let's try something else. Let's try a, a square function, t, y is equal to t squared. So I'll input that function and then run the Fourier series. Let's run it for uh, five terms. You can see it's pretty darn good. Uh, this parabola is estimated quite well by just uh, five terms. Now I want to try something a little bit more exotic. How about sine of t times the exponential of t? So I'll input this function and then run it with, uh, let me try uh, two terms. And you can see it's starting to approximate. It's not great, but uh, it's okay. I'll bump this up to uh, 10 and run it again. And you can see it's becoming quite good. Again, at the uh, endpoints, it's not so great. Well, that gives you a sense for what we're doing with the revisions to Annex B and using uh, cosine regression or trigonometric regression or Fourier series, whatever you want to call it, to estimate the curvature of the tank bottom. And again, if you really want to understand this, uh, you'll have to read the white paper that is posted on GitHub. Thank you.